So to get started with this one, I just have a cylinder in the scene. I just hit Shift A and added a cylinder, nothing special. Got my camera pointed at it. And then on the cylinder, we're gonna be using the displacement. You don't have to use it, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna be adding a subdivision surface modifier, changing it to simple and turning on adaptive subdivision. And if you don't have this adaptive subdivision setting, go over here to your render engine, change it to cycles and the feature set to experimental. And then you should have access to that adaptive subdivision like that. And you can just right click this guy and hit shade smooth and you should be good to go. Then if you head over here to the shading tab, go over to your render preview if you want to view it as you go. Then you can sort of see that it smooths everything out with that subdivision surface. Then you can press new. And for the lighting, I didn't know if I showed you this, but you're just going to uncheck scene world. I'm just using the built in forest lighting for this. So then we're going to make our bark mask. This is the first thing we're going to do. So we'll press shift A, search for a Voronoi texture here, like so. And then we're going to be switching this one to the randomness onto a 0.4. And we're actually going to go to edit preferences and enable the node wrangler add-on if you have not already. So just go to preferences add-on, search up the node wrangler, and then check the box. Then with this selected, you can press control and T. And we're going to be using our UV mapping for this. You can try to mess around with object or generated, but for this, we're going to be using UV because it works on any tree you have with a UV map, as long as you unwrap it, which you should be doing. Anyways, now that we've unwrapped this, we can control shift and left click this guy for a quick preview. There's going to be a seam right here, but don't worry, it, it doesn't actually make a difference later on. So anyways, this next step is going to be basically turning this into bark. And to do that, we're going to hit Shift A and search for a map range here. We're going to place that here. I'm going to take the color from this into the value. Then we can Control Shift and left click the map range to preview so we can sort of see what's going on here. Then with this uh, map range, and with the scale on this Voronoi texture, we're going to want to be switching that. And so we're going to hit Shift A. I'm going to actually add a value node to adjust this because we're also going to be using the same value for something else in a minute. So we'll take this value into the scale here, and we're going to change this to a 50, like so. So we're sort of getting our bark shape. But we notice that it's not exactly what we want, so we're going to stretch it out with this mapping node to a 0.25 on the Z. And that's going to give us this right here. We can also switch it to a 0.1, and that'll give us a much more barky effect. So next, we're going to hit Shift A and search for another Voronoi texture. And we're going to switch this one from F1 to Distance to Edge. And we'll plug this value right here into the scale. And then we're also going to take this vector and we'll plug it into this one. But we're going to, to do that, we're going to hit shift and right click on this. And then I'll give us this extra node. Then we can plug that into the vector. So now we can grab this and move it in between. And it's a lot nicer to look at. Then we're going to press this map node, map range here, and then hit shift D, move it down here, take this distance into the value. Then we can control shift and left click the preview. And so we can see that it's the exact same shape as the other one. But the except the randomness, obviously, so we need to switch that to the same thing, 0.4. And so we can see it's the same shape, but it gives us a gradient from the outside to the inside for the height of the bark. And so we're going to tweak that gradient a little bit here by moving this from minimum to a 0 0.01, just to up the thickness of those black lines. And then this from maximum here to a 0 0.03, so that it makes it super contrasty. Then we're going to be factoring this into a mask. So we're gonna hit shift A. We're gonna search for a math node here. And we're gonna switch the function on this guy to greater than. And then what we can do with this is plug this guy into the value. And if we preview this right here, we can see that it's um, uh, only taking into account half of basically what we have. And that may not make a whole lot of sense in your head right now, but the reason we have this is, is it can be a mask for where we're having the different sized barks affecting each other. So now that we have our main set right here, we're going to take all of this and we are going to select these four right here and press H. And that's gonna hide them and we're gonna put them nice and close together because we're not gonna be adjusting the values on any of these anymore. So we can just hide them entirely like this. Then we'll take this value, line it up here nicely and then this greater than, put it as the exit. Then we'll select them all like this and press Control J. And now we have a frame Super cool. So then with this guy, we're gonna select everything in it. And then we'll press Control Shift D like this and put it right under. Then we'll press Shift R. And so now we have three of these. 
and they sort of all went inside of each other. So with this frame selected, you can press Alt and P, and then same with the other one, Alt P, and that'll take it out of way. Then I'm gonna hold Shift and right click over the three lines, and then grab it and move it over here just so we stay organized much better. So now that we have our three masks, all we have to do to change these guys is come into here and change this top greater than node to a 0.333 because it's gonna be affecting a third of it. And this guy down here will change the value on this scale to a 75 like so and then we're going to switch this threshold here to half because it's going to be switching in half of this guy when we fix them and this last value will switch to a 100 and then this threshold to a one currently we have this on this greater than node right here and then on this guy we have this and on this guy we have this so these are just the masks so then we're going to press shift a and we can search for a mix rgb node we're going to take this greater than node into our factor then we're gonna take this bottom map range into our color one, change this other color to a black. So if we preview this now, we can see that we have our smallest level of bark. Then I'll check clamp. Then I'm gonna hit shift D on this guy, move him up. Then we're gonna use this next greater than node as the factor. We'll use this bottom guy as the color one, and we'll use this previous mixed nodes color as color two. Then we can preview this guy, and we see that it's mixing in all of the different bark sizes together. And then we just have to do that one more time for the guy up here. So we'll take this mix node, shift D, move him up here, greater than into the factor, bottom map range into color one, this mix into color two, then we can preview. And now we have our three different levels of bark. And that's super sweet. So I'm just gonna select all this guy and then grab him and move him over here. Like that. And then we can set the factor him into our bump and our displacement. So we'll hit Shift A, search for a bump node here. And then we'll take this color into our height and then the normal into the normal. So now if we preview our principal shader, we can see that it's affecting the bump and it's starting to look like tree bark. Then we hit Shift A and search for a displacement node like this. Take our color, put it into our height. And then we'll be messing with the displacement at the end. For now, I'm just gonna leave it here so that everything runs smoothly and the recording doesn't slow down when I'm trying to explain some color things to you later on. So we'll plug this into displacement later. And we'll also, while we're here though, we can go to our options in this panel over here. And if this isn't open, you can press N on your keyboard and you can open up this panel. Go to options, you see this displacement setting, switch it to displacement and bump. So that's just gonna allow us to use this as displacement later. You don't have to use it, the material still looks good without it. But if you wanna use this displacement, you can. So anyways, this next step is going to be factoring in our color stuff. And to do that, we're actually going to be using this same thing again for mix, except mixing them in a slightly different way. So I'm going to grab these guys and I'm going to move them a little bit out just so that we have a little more room here. Then I'm going to hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB node, and I'm going to put him in between the two right here. So I'll have one row like this and then another row that'll be in between like windows sort of a thing. So then I'm gonna take the greater than node as our mask again, but this time for color one, I'm gonna take in the top map range node and then switch this to a black. So the difference here is that it's giving us a different value basically for each um, uh, individual tree bark. And that's really good because it's gonna allow us to give us random um, uh, molding effects and color effects for the different pieces of tree bark. And it's gonna make the material really pop and look a lot more natural. So yeah. Anyways, we'll hit Shift D on this mix node here, take the greater than into the factor, the top map range into color one, the previous mix node into color two, preview him. Now we can see that they're sort of blending together a bit better. And same thing with this last one, Shift D, greater than into the factor, top guy into color one, previous mix node into color two, and now we have all of this. So then we're gonna randomize it a little bit more because we don't want it to be the same depth and stuff as the bump. So we're gonna hit Shift A and it's really easy. We're just gonna search for a white noise texture right here. And if we take this color into the vector of this guy, but currently we're previewing this one with Control Shift and left click. And we can see the values here. And then we can Control Shift and left click this white noise texture. And it gives us a completely different randomness value. So here it's like this. And then here it randomizes the colors in a completely different way. And you can see it also has a color option if you prefer. Yeah, but anyways, that's super cool. Now we're just gonna be factoring this into 
a mix node and it's going to be the factor for it. So I'm going to hit Shift A and search for the mix node like this. We're going to move him up here, take this value into our factor. Then this color one is going to come from the white noise texture as well. Then this color two is going to be our um, uh, moldy effect. So currently it's just looking like this, which is why we need to get that moldy effect in here. And to do that, we're going to press Shift A, search for a Musgrave texture like this. And then we're going to want to plug it into our mapping, but not this mapping because this one's all stretched out on the Y. So we're gonna hit Shift A and search for another mapping node like this. Then we can take our UV into the vector again, and then this vector into our Musgrave texture. Now I'll control shift and left click this Musgrave texture and currently it's looking like this. You see a seam there, but it's obviously that didn't make an effect with the other one. So it's okay. And the better your UV unwrap is, the better everything else will be. But it's still gonna, it's looking good. Don't worry about the seam. Anyways, the next step is to change the scale to a 50 here. So we wanna really up this and get those little fine details. The detail up to a 10, so we get more of that. And the dimension, we're gonna switch all the way down to a 0.1. So it's going to give us a sort of fuzzy effect. Then to modify a little bit more, we're going to hit Shift A, and we can search for a map range node. I'm going to leave all these values on this at default, so it's not really going to change anything, but it is going to keep everything between the values of 0 and 1. Because as you can see, if we preview this guy, it looks a little bit different than if we preview this guy. And that's because some of the values went to the negatives or, the, or over 1 on the value scale, and so this just sort of brings everything in. Then after that, we're simply going to factor this into our color two. And so if you preview, we can see that it is affecting the different bark uh, in a different way. So the darker barks that were in the white noise aren't being affected by the mold as much as the lighter barks are. And so yeah, I just thought that was a sort of, sort of cool way to randomize aging effects on the different pieces of bark. But now that we've done that, we can factor this into our bump. So we'll hit Shift A and search for a bump node. I'm going to give us some more space here because we're sort of getting uh, kind of cramped. So I'm going to just grab all of our results here and I'll grab the displacement too. And I'm just going to drag them out a little bit like so. So I'm going to take this color here into our height. I'll leave the strength on a one. And I'm going to grab this guy, move him all down a little bit. So if we preview this guy, we can see that it has a new sort of moldy bump going on here, which is super nice. So then I'm going to take this normal and then plug it into the normal of our other bump. So now if we preview our shader, we can see that they're sort of adding on top of each other and giving us some new interesting bump. And so now all we have to do is factor into our color and stuff. And to do that, we're going to be using this white noise texture and then this texture a little bit here. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and search for a mix RGB. This is going to be our bark colors and I'm gonna take the value from this and I'm gonna bring it into the factor. So if we preview right now, it's looking like this, but we can change these values to black and white so you can get a clear image that is the same thing. So on this color one, we're gonna be changing that to a hex value of a 968C86. Again, that is a 968C86, like so. Then this color two, we're gonna be changing that to a hex value of 706156. Again, that is a 706156, just like that. So now we have our bark colors, but obviously we wanna be able to adjust these really easily without having to come in and change two colors and hope they're similar. So we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a hue saturation node that we, so that we can adjust these really easily without too much problem. So, and while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this value to a 0.5 because I want a darker wood for this render. So then all we have to do now is factor this into our um, uh, color mixed in with the little moldy colors. So we're gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna search for a, another mix RGB here. And I'm going to be plugging this color into color one and this color two is gonna be our mold color in a second. But for the factor, we're gonna be using this mix node but we don't wanna be using all of it because currently if we plug this in preview, we can see that the mold, whatever color we choose, would be taking up way too much space. So we're gonna hit Shift A so we have more control over that. I'm gonna add this math node in between. And I'm gonna switch the value to a negative 0.7. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of mold here and there. And as you can see, it's affecting the different pieces of bark in different ways. And that's super cool. Anyways, for this color too on this 
uh, mold. We're I'll give you a hex value for that. We're going to be using an A4, B, 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 C. Again, that is an A4, B, 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 C. Just like that. So now we have our colors for that. Now I'll just go ahead and check clamp on our two color nodes to make sure that we're staying in between the proper values. Then all we have to do is plug this base color into here. And if we preview our principled shader, we can see that we currently have this going on here. These are our colors and we have this guy. So this next step is if we want to be able to see this lighting a little bit better, we can actually switch the rotation of our forest lighting to something like a 135. And that will give us some more light on our bark so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And currently we just have the bump. And so we can factor the displacement in now. So I'm gonna take this displacement and simply plug it in here and we'll see what happens. As we can see, this is obviously way too strong. And so I'm gonna be coming into this displacement. I'll change the mid-level to a one. And then the scale down to like a 0.1. So we can see what that's looking like. Yeah, this is starting to look a lot better. 0.1 is looking good. This roughness, I'm gonna to switch to a 0.75 so that we make sure we're, we're all rough and everything. Nice, and we're starting to get this really cool tree bark and it's looking really good. We're gonna try to up the scale a little bit more on this, maybe like a 0.2 or is that a little too strong? Maybe a little too strong. So you can play with this scale on this to go for what you like. You can also play with the mid-level, try changing it to a zero, try leaving it at a one and stuff like that. But anyways, with that said, that is the final product of the material you can Play with this in your uh, viewport. I'll go ahead and show you some settings you can change around. First off, you can change your values on the scale of the bark. So if you want the bark to be like smaller or bigger, you can always like up this to like maybe, maybe up this one to a 75, this one to a 100, and then this one to like a 125, and then you get some smaller pieces of bark. You can also play with your colors here. So if you want something like a red, you maybe change this like a 0.45 on the hue, maybe up the saturation to a two, lower the value to like a 0.25, maybe saturated even a little bit more, like a three or four, and then boom, you have some dark red bark like this. You can obviously play with your colors and such, and you can also play with the moldiness. You can subtract more to take it out. You can add more to add more mold, etc. So anyways, that's super cool, and I wanted to show you this material because I thought it was kind of a good tree bark, but yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to switch these back to default values, and I'll see y'all guys in the next one. Adios.